Hello everyone, Oily here. Thanks for stopping by. It's a little hot here in Western Oklahoma, about a hundred plus degrees today. And I tell you wow. what, when I went to water earlier, so that I could get in here and see you lovely people, whew, my cheeks were bright red. But on the bright side, I did get to. Oh crap! And I did it, didn't I? We got I to forgot mute. To mute my external. It's her first it's, time, everyone. Just hang by. We'll get it together. Yeah, I'm sorry. Are, are your are dogs you? handling the heat okay? I like your dog videos. My dogs are handling the heat great because they're spoiled rotten, so they stay in when it's 100 plus degrees outside. Our husky likes to go and swim in the, the cow tank out there. We have a goldfish that's about this big that swims around in there and a catfish and... It's the only one of 50 goldfish that the catfish wasn't able to eat when we put the babies in there. It survived. It's a survivor for uh, fish. So, hey, Hidden. How's it going? Hey, Faith. Hidden new mitt did it here. Good to see y'all. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Hey, living, frugal, and prepping. Um, so, anyway, um, got everything done. And man, my grass has gone from crunchy, which it was last week, to I've put water on it. Which I mean, we have such fire dangers. I've had to just water like crazy to get that grass from being crunchy, and so I've done that. So I have the same problem with raisin bran. <laughs> you have to water your raisin bran. Well, yeah, I, I use almond milk. Oh, you know, it's silk stuff. Yeah. But you no. know, you have to let it soak just long enough so it's kind of crunchy but not like you know razor sharp so tell me where the teats are on an almond <laughs> i don't know man i just buy the That's almond milk my husband always tells, so I just to say it. how do you milk an almond <laughs> Carefully. i have no idea he's like <laughs> I just go to the store and buy the almond milk, man. I don't know. It's the silk. <laughs> He's not deep. He's not deep, Oily. He doesn't think about it. He probably doesn't even use a dang coupon. He just makes <laughs> real money. Oh, my gosh. So, okay, I know that the guns and the gear and all of that stuff is, like, really glamorous, you know. But the problem is... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah buddy. But... You know, we kind of got to eat. <laughs> you know, that that's a significant part of our preps. So we need to work on ways that we can store food, which we've discussed in earlier episodes you can check out. But Mouse Toes is like the best gardener of all of us, you know, on the panel anyway. <laughs> and so she's going to head up this chat, and then we'll chime in when she hollers our name during the chat. So, um, but... I had a beautiful garden when I lived in Kansas, western Kansas. The ground was beautiful and dark and just full of nutrients. And I had no effort involved in doing my gardening there. But now, it's awful. It's absolutely awful here. Dust bowl. Oh, it's terrible. It's just sand and clay. We... we went and tilled up all of the ground for our garden last year and i made the stupid mistake of trying to plant stuff in that well the problem is sand and clay makes for like brick mm -hmm. cement even after we plowed it i mean it just doesn't work until we can amend that soil more we started doing containers and i i don't have a ton of them out there right now so i just have onions and tomatoes and some peppers and things that I knew would work for Western Oklahoma. So that's what I've got right now. Um, and so that's why you know, I'm not. I have faith in you. I, I really <laughs> have faith that you're going to make it grow. I mean, I do. I you know? do have. Most you're a determined I person. You will. You will make. I can't wait to see the videos when you get. You know, have like this gigantic bumper crop of all kinds of good stuff. I will succeed. I promise. Because I've got a. Um, compost pile going back there now and I've, I'm adding to it. It's not very big yet. I just got it started, but I'm adding to it and it's going to work. I have, I have to do it. I have yes. to get done. But until then, I'm container gardening and that's working out all right. 
But now I'm turning it over to Mouse, and we lost Squib for some reason. I'm not sure if he was having issues or what, but hopefully he'll be able to hop back in here. But now, turning it over to Mouse. By the way, if anybody wants to check out Steemit channels, I have the Oklahoma Prepper and White Volcano Squad. Their links are down there, plus all of the YouTube, all of the panel's YouTube channels are listed below, so you can click on those and go and sub them up over here on YouTube and go follow them on Steam. All right, over to you, Mousy. Do it. Hello, greetings. <laughs> I am in charge of the gardening section of this. Do you know why? Because I'm the oldest person here, so she thinks I've been digging in the dirt longer and put me in charge. So put your helmets on, people, because this could get bumpy. I don't know I what the hell I'm doing. Knows. I know that you garden. <laughs> I do. I'm a mad gardener because I'm a mad canner. If you have an emergency seed vault that you brought from a prepper's magazine, I would like you to save the cue container it came in, and this winter just burn the seeds that you got in it, because you ain't going to eat off of that. Gardening is not for weenies. And just what Oily said, it depends on where the heck you are. When we lived in Iowa, now, my husband generally, when he digs a garden, the first thing he does is he cuts my cable. Because the company comes out and says, here's your cable line. Well, that means it's two feet on either side of it. He goes three and still cuts it. It's how it goes for us. <laughs> we ever gardened was Iowa. And had my husband spat in our yard, we would have grown a child. If I saw a squash that was almost the right size, I would have to set a timer to go out 12 hours later to pick it or it would be twice that size in 13 hours. <laughs> that, I mean, I should have left my raggedy furniture and clothes and filled up that Mayflower trailer from the moving van lines with the dirt and just <laughs> hauled it around everywhere I lived. Because mm -hmm. when they, Iowa has 25% of the world's richest farmland. It ain't mm -hmm. no joke. Their women are some biggins and their men are thin and the hardest working people you've ever made. And when you smile in Iowa, that's a show of teeth, aggression, like Cujo the dog. Don't do it. You don't grit. Right. See, the oilies, that's what they see when you go hello. So you just look at people sideways, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, there is one reason and only one reason that I garden, apart from the side. The, and now the share button is not working. The screen share still doesn't work. That is just no. sucky, sucky. It's so wrong. Let's see. Try mine. Let me try one more time. I don't know why they got to break stuff. I mean, we paid no money for this. You think stuff could work. Nope, it's broken. So anyway, what I was going to show you was a picture of my canning pantry. Because the reason I oh. garden is to can and for food storage. That's the only reason I do it. Because it is hard. I'm now on the coast of South Carolina. This is really my third summer season. So I came from little Greenville, South Carolina, where I had this adorable raised bed garden, and I'd had compost going for two years, and I had all that clay oily talk spout, and I amended, amended, amended it. And in one summer, out of a 16 by five raised bed, I canned 292 jars of vegetables. Wow. Carrots, peas, green beans. I grew artichokes. Okay, my squash was running down the lake trail. Okay, it was crazy. It was like I had squash taken over. My, I had two acres, but I only had this little raggedy raised bed. And I would show you a picture, but the darn screen share, it's broken. Okay? <laughs> Mine seems so I come, I come here to the state of South Carolina on the coast, where I can catch crab and fish right out my backyard. Right? Well, mine's broken, so shut up. So, anywho, <laughs> deer, it depends on how you think about it. Is it a deer blessing or is it a deer problem? It's a problem when you grow a vegetable garden. Mm -hmm. My house is raised 12 feet up in there, so I can shoot them off my deck. But instead, the first thing we had to do was spend $463 on a 12-foot deer fencing. My husband drive in 12-foot poles. I have a 30 by 30 garden. And I came with these cute little heirloom scenes from my Greenville, South Carolina garden, and I just saved them all myself. 
heirloom seeds are weak, like a 102-year-old man, okay, weak. I planted them in my little greenhouse, which evolved into, I'm on my third one, because plastic gets tore up in the hot sun, and we have terrible wind, not like oily has wind in Oklahoma, but it's close. Can I ask how, can I ask how close you are to the ocean? 1.23 miles. Okay. By kayak, that's a 20-minute paddle in my kayak. Do you, get moisture? Do you get moisture from the you know ocean at all? Or? No, there's no moisture here at all. Okay. That's weird. Okay, so what was I saying? You're okay, so I put my You're ranting about vegetables and <laughs> heirlooms. My deer fits up, right? And I give my cue heirloom seeds. Oh, I want to shoot him with his own gun. Okay. And I get him going in my greenhouse, and they're adorable. And I put them out, and in three days, I have eight rows, okay, no, six, twelve, twelve rows that are eight feet long by two feet wide. They just, did, there were like insects the size of my head on every one on the third day. If you have a squash bug that's the size of your thumbnail, here they're the size of my head. Oh. Okay, they come straight up from hell, okay? So that didn't work out so good, and I spent six weeks growing all those seeds. So now I've kind of missed the growing season. So then I got to buy me. So you, sometimes you just go hybrid. I cannot grow heirloom seeds here. It makes me sad. Okay. But I need to grow tomatoes to can them. So if you think when the poop hits the fan, you're going to go stick some of your little seeds in the ground and it's going to work. Unless you're in Iowa, that is not going to work out so good for you. Exactly. <laughs> right. And you can grow in containers, right? You can grow them in pots. But I have the same issue that Oily has. We have wind. I face towards the ocean with what they call gentle southern breezes. They're gale force <laughs> winds. <laughs> Last year, to let the weeds grow up between our rows. And that's where the cotton mouse hide, but that's just part of life. Okay, alligators lay it down. It's not a problem. They can't get in my deer fence or they're heading so far. It acts as a windbreak. Then I started putting solo cups when I'd get my tomatoes about the size of my hand to give an additional windbreak because they get wind burned at 98 degree days and we were still in May. So gardening is not for weenies. Wait, your so what are you doing graph, with the solo cups? Solo cups are doing what now? Your graph may say, plant this in your zone in June. Whatever. The truth is that may be too late for you. So you have to experiment and go, okay, that worked better when I planted at the end of March. And the solo cups were to protect the seedlings that I had because we have such high wind. So the solo cup, you cut out the bottom, set it over the plant, and then it gets bigger and it was protected from the wind so it doesn't get weak. That's what the solo cup was for. Well, I heard that everybody in like South Carolina has a solo cup with some kind of drink in it. It's like how you drink in, in the South. No, we drink out of mason jars. You heard wrong, but that's all right. You're not from here. I don't know how y'all do it in Hawaii. See, Oily knows. <laughs> She's got a ball well, jar. Somebody on the internet with a red solo cup was trying to explain it to me. How everyone in the South drinks out of a red solo cup. Everyone you came down to South by one person with a solo cup. Because them little cups are expensive and we're cheap. See, a ball jar glass <laughs> lasts forever. <laughs> yeah. So you and you can have a great container garden, but the main thing for any garden is how are you going to water it. We're on a well, which of course has iron. I have an RO system, but I ain't using my RO system to water a garden. So we have uh, rain barrels that we use to put in there. But you have to raise your rain barrels up on a built-up platform or you have no pressure. And I'm in the low country, flat, dead flat. So it's not like I can put it at the top of the hill like I did in Greenville and get just unbelievable water pressure when I open it. And the same thing with a container garden. 
you're going to have to garden water that two, maybe three times a day, depending on how hot it gets. Isn't there get some it. kind of solar powered water pump that, that will suffice, or is that not? Is that just a myth? I don't have one. Hidden New Mississippi, Hidden New, him, Hidden says that I confuse him. What's the problem, Hidden? <laughs> he didn't admit that did. What's wrong? He's not talking to us now. <laughs> There's a delay. There it is, just now showing up on the screen. Okay. Jared, yep, that's me. Okay. Red Solo Cup, come and fill me up. Oh, yeah, okay. Is that uh, Faith is singing the song, right? That Toby, is it Toby Keith who did? Come fill, fill me up. up. Mm hmm. Let's have a party. Okay, yeah. hidden. Like I can say hi y'all, which means all y'all, or I can say how y'all's mama in them. You don't need to make fun of the fact that sometimes I pluralize something. I'm Southern. I take leave with the language. Okay, so if I have one tomato plant, I use one solo cups. If I have two, I use two solo cups. It's the same thing. It's one <laughs> cups on every one with the bottom cut out. Any other questions? Hit a new mitt to dit. So it's to protect from the wind, basically. It's a windbreaker, yes. Okay. Like a jacket that the FBI wears and stuff. All right. Well, there's spots in Hawaii where we get a lot of a lot of rainwater every day on a regular basis. So it really depends where you are. We have microclimates here, so you know uh, there's spots where it's terrible and there's spots where it's perfect. You know? yeah. yeah, I don't live in the perfect spot. Yeah, well, in the perfect spots you have all the drug grows and all the helicopters flying over trying to find them. What are Hidden they growing? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, the Pacalolo. Wacky tobacky? Yep, Pacalolo. Hey, what? It's out there in the house. But there's, okay. no, there's farmers markets and, and uh, it's, it's really, uh, you can get some, I, I, you know, you can get some amazing um, stuff here, uh, food uh, at the farmers markets, you know, uh, it's just amazing uh, the kinds of some Unusual tropical fruits and stuff. Oh, there's a whole community that's really into that stuff out here. Um, whenever I do actually get a plot of land big enough and to do some farming, I'm going to be like, you know, binge watching prepper farming videos <laughs> for tips. Do you um, see it? I screen shared. Yeah, what? I see it. Oh. Daddy, winning. I'm like, Trump, I'm winning. <laughs> that's Charlie Sheen, not Trump. <laughs> no, that's, that's Trump. Can you see? Okay, that is why I garden, so that I have tomato juice, tomato sauce, green beans, peas. What else? Well, I got meat in there, but I don't grow a chicken, you know, or grow a pork butt. Um, you don't have chickens? No, I don't have chickens. Yeah, they're I just great garden. fertilizer. Do you have but... chickens? In a condo? Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Okay. <laughs> I yeah, have okay. like I have like egg beaters <laughs> in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> and you can dehydrate the stuff you grow, like Oily talked about. I don't know if she talked about it on air. You can do a million things with it, you know. I dehydrate it, I can can it, I can freeze it. In that you know, DC truck. Yeah. When, when I was a kid, we had we lived in a place in the San Fernando Valley and we had this gigantic plum tree. And so my mom would make plum pies, you know, and she'd make like a dozen or two dozen of them, you know, when the harvest came in every year and we would pick all the plums and, and, you know, we just, she just freeze them in the meat freezer, you know, uh, and, you know, my dad would always order like half a cow or whatever. And, and, and there'd be like beef in the freezer in the garage and, and just a stack of under uh, where the, and besides the beef that he got from the butcher, there was, you know, like a stack of, Always a stack of, of frozen uh, uh, plum pies, and they were awesome. They were just so see, sweet, and so I mean, you know, I miss that. That's it was just beautiful. See, that alone was worth it, right? Just that experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Can you see my screen uh, share, Oily? I can. Let me. Pre are you presented? Let me make sure. Yeah, I you you need to present it. Yeah. So. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So that is my first garden in Greenville, South Carolina. That's better but, than what I got right now. <laughs> but it gave me it gave me almost three hundred jars wow. of canned goods. That's and, amazing. And see, that's at the end of a hill. So the black tube, there's a big 326 gallon rain barrel at the top, which is how I watered it. And it doesn't have to be a huge space. I mean, I look at people's gardens with envy that are like, you know, five acres and they did it, you know, with a hand plow and oh. it's just a couple hard. I mean, I'm mad envy, but you don't have to have something huge and I'm 60. I can't maintain something huge so but it, at least if you think you're going to need to feed yourself at least practice in something don't just think you're going to go you know turn over a shovel of dirt and grow yourself a garden and remember you've got to grow enough to get yourself through the winter exactly. also yeah so that that makes uh, a difference I, I, can, okay Am I, okay i have something real quick to add I'm trying to see if my audio is coming through. Um, I wrote really quick. Um, when you were talking about uh, freeze drying and dehydrating uh, your your harvest, uh, one thing that you can do that I, I've really been wanting to do this a lot is uh, get your dehydrator and uh, when you go and cook your dinners, make a huge for like ten people just just for you and and whoever's going to be there. Make sure you make um, a huge buffet, and what you're going to do is with all of the leftovers, take it and put it in a uh, dehydrator, and make sure you put wax paper down and cut the little circle down, or uh, if you have the uh, square ones, then you, you know you just put the wax paper in. Um, and dehydrate your, uh, your food. You can dehydrate spaghetti. You can dehydrate a. Uh, uh, Red beans and rice with sausage. Uh, you can dehydrate anything that you make uh, with a high moisture content and put them in a uh, vacuum uh, seal bag. And you can just put them on the shelf and you can stack as many as you need to up and, you know, portion out enough for, you know, a a, a serving or whatever what you would, what you would eat when the time comes and, and you have to you're either gonna, you know as, as a prepper you're in a, a SHTF situation where whether it be wildfire or um, a tornado damage or earthquake or hurricane or volcano or whatever it be you know, into the world. my name yeah <laughs> into the world you know whatever it be all you have to do is take those and um, crack it open and put a little bit of hot water in there and rehydrate it. And you have a home cooked meal that you created yourself that has been dehydrated that you basically created as survival. Absolutely. I agree because that is the way, you know. Yep, and when you dehydrate, you're compacting it, so you can fit a lot more on the same shelf space, although you do not want everything dehydrated. You're going to want variety. You're going to want your canned goods, your home canned stuff. You're going to want, you know, because the flavors are different when you dehydrate versus canning. And Yes. So you want a variety of all of it, and you need to put some of that stuff in the freezer, too, because depending on what's going on, if something major in the electric is not affected, you, you can have stuff in your freezer, too. So that's right. and, and one, one more thing I want to add. Uh, a lot of people, and this has been brought to my attention by, uh, by uh, a friend of mine. That he, he's actually my roommate. That, uh, you know, a lot of people don't consider, take into consideration when they go to store and, uh, and uh, prep water. Make sure you have enough to rehydrate your food to use with what you're going to cook with. 
So that is another thing that you have to take into consideration because I can store 55 gallons of water and that's going to last me for about two months. But what about whenever I go to cook with that water? It's only going to, I'm, I'm dropping that down to, you know, uh, I'm, I'm dropping that down by half at least. Yes. See, that's dead on spot on because for those of us who've been through say a bad winter storm on a well and we lost our water and we're toting up our five gallon um, milk containers, five gallon, our gallon milk containers of water, our potable water, just washing our hands, face, brushing our teeth with that, we learn how much of that water we use. And you make a really good point about the dehydrating that uh, was a great subject he brought up, Oily is you need to practice now. Will you like it dehydrated or do you prefer it frozen and defrosted or do you like it better canned? Because you don't want to find out when it's the only thing you have to eat, right? That yep. you, you don't like it that way. And what I've put a picture up of here is when I, I done channeled my Native American people, ancestry that I don't have, but that is our, my husband used the hand plow and he dug out a big trench for me and I lined it with mullet that I caught off my dock to line the bottom of my rose with. And yeah. notice... Uh, are they what, high in nitrogen or something? Well, it's just sort of the beginner fertilizer because if you notice my soil, it's sand. Now yeah. sand, is, sand is great when you combine it with some organic matter and you get the mix right where you can actually squeeze it in your hand and it makes a little clump. Because but you have to go pay for that like fertilizer, right? Or that soil, right? It wasn't just no. big up. So sandy soil can be very good because it has outstanding drainage. But what we had to do was spend the first year building up a compost pile. So my husband made the rose, right, because it's kind of a macho thing. There used to be a big old pine tree there that was chopped down because that's where our garden was going. That's before we got the deer fence up. Then we started putting in all our compost and organic matter and closing up over all those mullet in the bottom. So our first season was really tough. You know, and then you're really working hard on your compost with your food scraps. And because we have sandy soil and we also have wild Bermuda as opposed to fescue. So we couldn't add our grass clippings or we would just be putting in all that weed seed that would have been coming up through our garden. Um, uh, real quick, I want to add something. I really like what you did with the, 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 the fish there. That's awesome. Another thing I just found out, I just recently, actually in the last two days, I found out if uh, you have uh, all the eggs uh, that you haven't uh, cracked and cooked yet and they're, they've expired, you can uh, go ahead and take that whole egg and plant it down below the seed. And as the um, as the eggshell and the egg uh, go to disintegrate and and break down, it actually uh, releases uh, nutrients for your seeds to grow, such as uh, uh, high nitrogen levels and stuff like that. And uh, even if you do have all your eggs that <coughs> cook, save the eggshells, and you can actually plant directly into the eggshell and. Um, yes to start your seeds and once you get ready to transplant you can actually take that entire eggshell and dig your little hole for you to transplant and you can actually put the whole eggshell down in the uh in the uh in the, in the soil just like it is a uh oh, what are they called the little little potting uh, little uh, compostable pot yeah a compostable pot so you just plant instead of having to take the take the sprout out of the the little uh, starter pot, you can pr uh, plant the whole thing, you do that with the egg, and that eggshell starts to break down and it creates uh, the nitrogen and, and all the other nutrients your plant needs. And th this is a picture of, I'm not trying to make a classy garden, people. That is three rain barrels at different times I got off Craigslist. 
and because we have to raise them up in the air to get some pressure, my husband just built some little wonky um, that hold them up, and then that's how we water our garden. And if Gravity you see works. Looks like Gravity works. It's our friend. If you look in the back, you see that little square of hay over there? Yes. Yeah. To the, okay. Don't grow anything in that. Okay. I'm in a place, right, that gets torrential rain, high tides. We thought, let's try one, right? It got so funky. I mean, Skankopotamus funky with a marsh rat moved into that thing and ate my uh, celery from the bottom. Oh, no. Yeah, so that didn't work out, So, but we gave it a try. And you made a really good point about the eggshells. And something that we do now is I, let, I dehydrate the eggshells, and then I grind them up in one of those little free javalier or something, little tiny choppers you get. And it's the only thing I grind in that. I used to make mushroom powder in it. And then, I mean, I grind it to a fine powder, let it sit there like an hour, take it outside, and I pour it into a gallon milk <laughs> jug. And then I add water to that. And then I've got liquid to pour on there. You know, I know that when they grow coffee around here in Kona, they, they have, they test the soil for calcium. So they get the, they know like the right percentage to get good coffee that it's supposed to be. And I, I'm supposing eggshells have calcium. So uh, that's, okay, that's not, exactly not. what it is. Yes. Yeah. And, and you bring up something brilliant because that's the other thing. Don't assume that you've got Iowa soil, right? Okay. You've got to test your soil. You can do it yourself, right, with sort of the knuckle dragon way, right? You use some soil, some baking soda if it makes bubbles. It's acidic, right? If you use soil and vinegar and it makes bubble, it's alkaline. Or you could now, while the poop has not hit the fan, right, send a sample off to your county extension center that will gladly test the soil and you'll know before you start gardening what your soil lacks our soil lacked everything when i took you can can't you can you buy like those just strips that test for ph level um you know for they, not too much money they don't work they work in a swimming pool but they don't work to give you a good dip I've tried it in other places, and then it's totally different from what the county extension sends me. But here, we had absolutely nothing in our soil. It was like, was that soil or beach sand, right? Yeah. So, because, um, whenever you were talking about the hay bale gardening, uh, you said that the it, it got it was so acidic that it, it basically ate up all of your celery. Um, one no, way, a rat ate it. A rat oh, ate it. It moved okay. into it. Lived wow. under it. Okay, I thought you meant it was like so acidic. Uh, and real quick, while we're on the uh, the subject uh, of pH, a good way to balance your pH in your garden is if you have a wood stove or if you barbecue and do a lot of wood grilling, then that ash will bring down the acidic level in your uh, in your garden. So that's another thing that can help uh, add nutrients. Uh, to or, or balance your nutrients in your garden. And on the screenshot that you showed, I mean, I what what was kind of didn't make sense to me is that you had testing your soil with with distilled with vinegar. I mean, that's that's acid, basically, it's a little great acid. That was a simple knuckle dragging test that I showed for if people don't want to okay. send a sand a sample off. That's okay. one of the things that people can use, and so we. And we even have a little testing kit, you know, with the little tubes you put it in. It's not as accurate as when you send to your county extension service, which you can do now before poop hits the fan. But if not, and you're trying to figure it out when the poop has hit the fan and you're trying desperately to grow food, then that would be an option. But there's a million options out there, you know, to try with yeah. that. And yes. I, just so some people know, um, I can't remember if it's Hoden Depot or Lowe's because when we redid our bathroom, we went to both. But I'm thinking it was Home Depot gave us a free soil testing kit. <gasps> no, it was a free it was a free water testing kit, is what it was. Okay. that's what it was. So yeah, you can test your water still, like you said for iron or whatever, you can do that. DC Truck Rebuild wanted to know how high your water got um, 
four. He said his was um, six foot off the ground, and the water would lap at the floorboards at its highest. He For lived what? On the bayou, not on the ocean. When you were talking about how high the water gets there sometimes. Yes. If you look at that garden picture right now, we had six inches in that when we got the October of 2015 South Carolina aquapocalypse. We got six inches inside that deer fence. It was all the way around our house. I think Squib needs a deer fence, by the way. And what happened was, so see, that's a deer fence right there. So you're limited to what you can grow. And then you see my rain barrels off to the right of that. Mm -hmm. Redneck and rain barrel. Knuckle drag and keep it simple. It ain't got to be some fancy thing. I would love to have had cattle panels. But them suckers is expensive, right? Yeah. So we the started kiss. out. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say it's the KISS method. Keep it stupid simple. Thank you. And People then like we, to make it too complicated sometimes. Yes. So we started out, my husband digging that out for me, me putting the mullet in, him covering it up with compost, and then we put that good agricultural plastic over. So, which was fine, but it gets so hot under that plastic Still, mm. that nut grass grows through it, and you get fire ants and termite mm. mounds under that. Oh, and yeah, we have fire ant crop issues here in Hawaii too. Oh yeah, and I would go like to dig out a little hole, and you got to make your hole in the plastic. Then you got to run your rain barrel to make a hole in it, and I'd go to stick my shovel in that hole and have ants covering my hands. So we got rid of the plastic this year. But a good way to keep it cheap, eight-foot fencing panels. And that's what he made our current raised beds with. So you've got to experience, experiment. We tried that method with the fish in it, with the compost, with the plastic. Didn't work so good. So you have to be flexible and ready to try something else. Yeah, what works in one area is not going to work in another because the soils are completely different. And and like you said, you don't want to be in the middle of a major situation and needing food. And, and plus, it takes time for food to grow. Even if you have the best soil and everything goes great, it still takes time for it to grow. You have to have something in the meantime. And what if something happens? Like here, I could have the perfect garden growing. What if a tornado comes through and rips it up? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's not just soil. I mean, for example, what you've got is a great setup. That wouldn't work here. I couldn't put right. a fence that tall in my yard because I live in a township, not out in the country. What? Also, deer in Michigan, you're, you're on the coast. you got those coastal deer. Somebody mm -hmm. might mistake them in the dark for a German Shepherd. Deer yes. in Michigan can jump over that fence. I've seen it. That's awesome. <clears throat> Yeah, so you, it's it's kind of disappointing too when you put a lot of work into. It. My father-in-law has got a like a ten foot fence around his uh, garden up north, and they've gotten over the fence. I've seen them jump eight foot fences with barbed wire on the top at the Air National Guard base. H so, have you tr have you considered like those uh, pop perimeter alarms? You know, with, if you hook them up to our, you know, those I, things, I, those I'm gonna have I'm gonna have too much. Once again, I'm in a township. I have too much noise. I, it's just something I have to deal with, or or, you know, pay for uh, uh, deer uh, repellent and stuff that washes off with the rain or other things like that. Now, eventually, I would like to live in a country, in which case I can do a setup like this, and depending on where I'm at and. Uh, you know what sort of critters I've, I, I've got to deal with uh, a fence like this would work out pretty good and this still let sunlight through and everything else but uh, this probably isn't a problem for you in South Carolina but in certain areas you might have hogs right like in yes. Oklahoma right oily Texas. A hog mm -hmm. will get underneath that so yes. there's all kinds of different things so it's not just the soil that affects how you know what works for you and uh, here doesn't work well there it's it's other factors as well yeah I mean, it's it's your location. It's pests, any different kinds of pests. It's the average rainfall. You know, rain is great, but sometimes you can get too much, and we get too little. So, I mean, it's you know, you have to work on amending your water and your soil. And and, and sometimes the pests are protected. Like a lot of the chicken growers, the people with chickens in their backyard got upset because uh, uh, like a uh, endangered, uh, nationally protected uh, Hawaiian hawk. 
was pre predating on their chickens, you know, and yes. so somebody shot one, that shot one and killed it, and they got in big trouble because it's like a, you know, federally protected hawk, yeah. and you know, they they and were you know, taken to the woodshed and spanked. Yep. If you hadn't been gardening or trying it, you may not know you have hogs in your area. You would in Texas. But you make an excellent point on that. How are you going to know until you try? Just like that fence goes well into the ground and cattle panels, you have to dig well into the ground or they dig under it. Mm -hmm. and if you look, that, that was our original greenhouse. Wasn't it cute? And it was so effective and it was greenhouse quality plastic. And do you know what the wind and sun did to that in two months? It was <laughs> shredded. I believe shredded. it. Yep. Yeah, one, one hurricane coming through Hawaii will mess up anything pretty much. Yeah, we didn't have a hurricane, right? But we had that happen. And it was like, okay, so my husband, who gives up on nothing, thank God, built this little, thug, I call it a green, it's a greenhouse, it's a thug. It survived Hurricane Matthew, okay? We it had 15 hurricanes last season, 15. See it? Can you see that little thing? Oh, yeah. Yep, that thing right there is the cat's pajamas. It has a clear roof, and nothing moved on it. He made the plastic into, like, frames to where if they get torn, he can just replace that frame. But nothing on that greenhouse was damaged, and there was at least eight inches of water in it. And that greenhouse is still standing after Matthew. But it took three different greenhouses to find the one that works here for us. And it's painted like Clemson colors, so you can't beat that because all in orange, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so you can use bamboo for everything because it's flexible and well. Oh yeah. You got right. bamboo, right? But so you have to try in your area because every area is different. But if you have a survival seed vault, just save the cute container, throw the rest away because you are going to be crying. Or you better know a farmer, right, who you can run your seeds to and he's going to laugh at you for heirloom seeds because they're so weak. They're not going to feed you when you need them to grow really fast. Mm. Well, I, I personally, I'm, I'm waiting for my, on Saturday, I'm supposed to get my three number 10 cans of Mountain House delivered. So, <laughs> Coffee? No, Mountain House uh, uh, freeze dried uh, foods, uh, number 10 cans. I think I got a pepper steak and rice and chicken and rice and uh, uh, some kind of chicken fried something or other. That, that's, it's all freeze dried by Mountain House. Yeah. Okay, Mouth but yeah, that's nice. your part of your food prep. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, now, and I need that stuff because I don't have a fucking garden yet. <laughs> I need my Bitcoin value. You said the F word, babe. Uh, you said the F word, babe. Yeah, no, no good. I see squid, but I don't hear him. Oh, what's a what's what's the uh, shelf life on the uh, uh, canned uh, vegetables until that seal fails? It's good because I keep mine. It just needs to be in a dark, cool place. I mean, it's in an air-conditioned room, has a curtain over it, right, that light doesn't get to it. I, of course, turn on light when I go in there. But as long as that lid does not fail, the food is safe that's in there. It can you lose, say, green beans could possibly lose some nutritional value after five years. But I've got stuff that we've eaten that was six years old because the seal mm. was still fine. It's as not long like as, go as ahead, long as it looks like you know you don't see any funky crap going on in there. It's not all cloudy, nasty. Mm -hmm. You can that it's cloudy right away. You just it's just going to be kind of cloudy looking. But most of it, when you can, it the liquid's going to be other than maybe discolored from the color of the vegetable. It's going to mm -hmm. be really clear, and you're going to have your your green beans or corn or whatever in there, and can look great. And Do you guys have lots of canning videos on your channels? Because uh, that's something I've, I'm one day going to have to learn how to do. Yes, Oily's a canner. I have them. Mm. And something you were talking about, Squib, this is interesting. Like I, I can can tomato juice or tomato sauce, and it can be 10 years old and never discolor. But I can buy a Heinz ketchup because there's only one kind of ketchup, and it's Heinz. I don't hunt. <laughs> I don't food line a Heinz, a Heinz, or a Heinz. I want a little sugar with my ketchup, so thank you. <laughs> I, 
I used to buy them when they were on coupons, and I hit because I don't want to be without ketchup. It's like my thing. Yeah, I get okay. it at Costco. You know, they have so, organic kinds now too. Yeah, I don't know if that's but, any good, but after two years, that Heinz started to discolor. Whereas if I canned ketchup, it never discolors. So how weird is that? So your Heinz will get dark in that plastic jar or glass jar, whatever you buy it in, right? But if you can jar, you know, put in a ball jar your own ketchup, it doesn't discolor. So what the heck is up with that? Yet they say, ooh, us home canners are going to kill it, ourselves. It, it, discolor, it discolors even if it's, like, kept in a dark place? Yeah, I was about to ask yes. that, too. Really? Yep, it, it was in my same pantry, yep, and I ran a test with it, and both got very dark. Now, it tastes like ketchup, and they say it's safe to eat, but it's exactly where I keep all of my cannon jars in that picture you saw. Wow. Yeah, so that, but And there are some things that will, over time, like I make my own general purpose cleaner by peeling oranges, drop it in a quart jar, fill it with vinegar, and it, usually in about six weeks, you're ready to strain that into a squirt bottle. Well, I had five of them going one away at the back, and I smelled vinegar in my when I was going to the elevator shaft. It ate through the lid. The vinegar wasn't even – it was an inch – from the top but it so I guess that's acidic the lid on the canning jar like rusted rotted wow so that was kind of bugging but I mean I didn't water bath or pressure can it but it was still kind of weird you know what I mean yeah and then another thing you got to think of when gardening is you ain't gonna know what kind of critters you got to you grow one, I have to use neem oil here, not the garbage you buy at Home Depot without the active ingredient, but I watch the Rusted Garden here on YouTube. He's a genius, and he started selling neem oil. Once I got that last year, my tomatoes, my green beans, everything made it through a full season without these insects the size. They'd be humming around. Okay, they'd be all out there. Do marigolds help at all, like planting those around? I had them. I had marigolds. I had the cutest little garden you've ever seen. They ate those too because these insects are the size of my head. But once I got the rusted garden, I can't say his last name. It's like Gary Pillarsheck or something. It was not new mysticist. No, it's hot, not hidden new mysticist. It's Gary Pillar. It's the rusted garden. And he sells you a three-pack of this neem oil that I have canned my own tomatoes now for two years successfully. Go, Gary. The Rusty Garden. Go, Gary. The Rusty Garden. Go, Gary. Go, Oily. <laughs> so, where were you holding up, Oily, on a pencil? Oh, yeah. I was just – I was. Uh, this is the one that I found of all of them. I found this. What oily. is that? It's a Chicken. Chicken. Like a reindeer chicken, a green <laughs> chicken type thing. Like, it's like the Joker, the Joker chicken. It reminds me of one of those Muppets, kind of. And BC says he likes MHP Gardener. Yes, absolutely. And all you can do is try. I don't want to eat a bunch of garbage food. I want to eat good food. I get. I'm from Louisiana. Okay, do you know what it's like to live in Louisiana? It's not easy, but you know why people live there? The food is kicking and the people rock. The, the weather is terrible, okay? But once you lived on a bayou, you only want to be there, right? Mm -hmm. But the food is good. That's why people go there. Yeah, we have so, visitors that come here from um, Louisiana, and, you know, like I said, they're the ones that brought the crawfish this last time. Yes. Oh my gosh, they are so awesome to visit with and just fun and Yep. Very like, down to earth people. Yeah. And yep. we celebrate everything with food, but we could catch it in our backyards. So to us it was like you didn't need a food bank. If there was we coordinated gardens in our neighborhood. Somebody new move in, they go, I'm going to grow okra. And somebody would say, oh, no, no, uh -uh, Miss Mary grows the okra. you got to grow something else, baby. <laughs> so everybody, my dad did the canning. We had a corner lot with my Uncle Franklin drinking Schlitz and Dixie beer and canning on a charcoal grill. So people bring their jars down. 
with their own colored towel, and my dad kept track of whose was whose. And drunk people can can, and they can can good. Oh, so wow. when you needed, yeah, when you needed a tomato, you went to Miss Eunice's house, and you tell her you need enough. Your mama wanted to can six pints. When you needed corn, we all shared food so together. Community garden. Everybody had their thing that they grew, and everybody yes. shared, mm -hmm. shared in that. That's awesome. That's what I was going to ask. There was a guy that um, I guess he started community garden, the uh, front yard gardens front yard community garden um, food is free project everybody he started gardening in his front yard and you know did a little raised bed garden out there raised some stuff he put a sign out there that said food is free while he's out there gardening people would come up they would never he never spoke to ever would start coming up and saying oh that's really interesting we have a little garden in our backyard before you knew it everybody was growing something different and it was a community yes. garden and now he travels around the world encouraging people to do these food is free community gardens like people can just come and pick out of the garden if they want you know no not to pick everything all at once but you know yes but see everybody. that's a cool idea i managed low-income properties and had nice properties and i thought you know our playground equipment's broke. It's nothing but drug dealers. I'm going to go rent a tiller and make my maintenance men till it up, and I'm going to have a big Saturday party. Mm -hmm. Maintenance men till it up, and then I send out flyers to all 150 apartments of hungry people, okay? And we buy the seeds out of petty cash, okay? And my staff's excited. Who showed up? And then when we sent out a flyer, we got strawberries, and we're out there working our butt. And we don't, none of us live on that property because we don't want, you know, I lived in a non-drive-by area. I just prayed I lived every day working there, right? Nobody stole the food, okay? We grew pumpkin, squash. I'd send out a flyer, put it up by the mailboxes. We got free squash. They don't want to cook it. You know, fresh food takes effort. Right, it's not Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, it's That's something so you know. Sad. That is just so sad. It was you know, gut wrenching. I mean, they couldn't do that for their kids. I mean, no. how much healthier their kids would be. Mm -hmm. You know, it would give. It would teach them how to grow their own food, where food actually comes from. It doesn't come from a shelf on a supermarket or from KFC. It yep. actually, you know, see the process of how it it comes to be. Hey, and it's, it's not. It's not like they were working two and three jobs. They couldn't be there. They're like, why you, why you want to grow food when it's at the store? And I'm thinking, and even the kids wanted to be interested, but their parents didn't want them to be. Until them strawberries came in, and then them kids went straight up crazy. So you had we, to come We had to a strawberry club. patch. You know, I rem what I remember about our strawberry patch in our house was like the first time we grew it, it was so sweet. But every year after that, we grew it in the same spot, and it got less and less sweet. Oh, what state was that? California. Oh, wow. I didn't know that because I'd grow the Everbear, but yeah, I guess that can happen. Yeah, I don't know much about strawberries. When I grow them, they're good, but I've never been, I guess, anywhere long enough to go, what are they like after yeah. four years? Oh, that's that makes you sad because you get, right, it gets thicker and well, bigger yeah, but and we had, spreads out. Yeah, the plants got bigger, but I mean, we got more strawberries, but they were, they didn't have as much sugar content, but the plums right. kept coming, you know, it's like those, you know, those frozen plum, plum pies, you know, if you had somebody move into the neighborhood, you want to make a new friend, give them a plum pie, they'll be your friend for life. I mean, it was like that. <laughs> See, you know, that's I, awesome. I have something I have to tell y'all. Okay, so I felt like a doggone fool because for the, uh, about seven weeks ago, six, seven weeks ago, I planted these dormant bare root trees I had. I had two two dormant bare root, elderberry, a, a peach tree, a five and one peach, um, two cherries, and a five and one pear. Elderberries took off like boom right away. The peach took off boom right away. The three on the end, the five and one pear, and the two cherries just look like dead sticks, and they didn't do nothing. And so I felt kind of like a fool watering these things every day. <laughs> well, trees can come to. back. Trees I was like, come. you just need to yank them up, hon. They're just, they're dead. They're dead. You know. That's what but my I'm mom like, had. That my folks had a have an orange tree that 
it was a dwarf orange tree and it didn't work and it, it it looked like it was dead and they but they she just kept watering it and and uh, they i think they moved it once and but it wasn't coming back and then finally one year it just started sprouting and then they get like 300 okay. oranges a year from a tiny little dwarf tree now that's but it, it had a few years say. of hell that's what i was happy. gonna say i i uh, did a scratch test on them because somebody said well scratch a little bit of the bark off see if it looks green underneath i tried that that five and one pear tree i tried to scratch that i about broke my nail on it it was yeah. awful I scrape on it to to see it didn't really look completely dead but it definitely didn't look like it was going to live and then the cherries i couldn't even scrape the bark off of those <laughs> anyway oh I decided, you know what? They, they, I asked advice over on Steam. It. They said, oh, well, it's not going to hurt anything to leave it. It's not like you can plant something else right now because it's too hot. So just leave it. If it, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you know, then in the fall or next spring, you can do something with it. I got a I'll funny. Since you brought on, a I'll be doggone. A few days ago, I go out there and down towards the bottom of my pear tree, I have little bitty sprouts just coming up, <laughs> and now there's even more. So I think my five and one pear tree is going to survive. Excellent. So, so that's going to survive. And I, you know, it's funny because I would just go out there and water them and I'd just be like, live in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes. Praying over, praying over my trees. And I, I, you know, I feel like God just. Blessed you. Faithfulness of praying over it and just saying, nope, he's going to bless this. Because yes, know, this is the way he's going to provide for us. So. Here, here's a, another thing about trees like that. We got a great fig tree going here and a plum tree, and we're like, "Ooh, those are almost ready to pick." Probably about two weeks. And the next day, my husband goes, "They're all gone." Squirrels, so oh and raccoons eat our plums. We never had that happen nowhere else. So here we had these groovy things. Nobody eats our lemons. Okay, but they eat our plums and our figs, so you don't know. Go ahead, Oklahoma, I'm sorry. Uh, real quick, if you guys uh, go out and buy a brand new um, seedling of any type of fruit tree, um, what what you want to do is you want to see, you want to find someone that has these uh, trees that are already producing fruit. And what you want to do in spring is you want to go and take a, a graft off of that producing tree and you want to graft it into your sprout that you have that is uh, not from a, a fruiting tree. Because if you do, if you um, take a, a, a seed and plant it, uh, let's say, for example, I want, to, I want to grow peaches. If you take a peach a seed and plant it, you're gonna take. It's gonna take a lot longer for that uh, tree to produce fruit. Now, if you take and uh, get a, a tree that has produced fruit in the past, and you take it and graft it onto that uh, that starter plant that you bought, you will have immediate that season. You will have a harvest ready to go, and it doesn't matter how big that that. Uh, that graft is going to get you will have a harvest that year it may be three or four peaches but you're going to have immediate harvest that year from grafting what um what they've told said is like on these bare root dormant trees like the first year that they produce they start producing the flowers you know the blooms for the for the fruit pick them off because it's just too hard like on these no i'm not saying on that but it's too hard it's to put too much stress on it, it needs more time so if they do bloom here late this year early next year whatever i'm gonna pick those blooms off and give them one more year i i i knew on these you know doing it this way it was gonna take a while before i'd start to reap the benefits of it but i want to get them established and get them in there and get them going because the sooner i do the sooner i start getting fruit from it but and then I also have um, I don't think anybody blocked you hun you're not blocked nobody swung the wrench at you simmer down simmer down hidden yeah if if you type if you like what he said if you type too fast it it it'll do that I 
will stop you and, and make you wait a little while before to let you type in there again. But Google I have a funny story uh, about um, uh, the my when my mom eventually learned how to make great pies. And she made great plum pies, but when she first started, you know, when I was a kid, very little young child, we lit, you know, they, my folks used to own an apartment complex right near the fabulous forum in, in in Los Angeles, and so she didn't know how to how to cook pies. So she got a cherry pie at the store. This is the famous story of my mom with a cherry pie, and so. She got a cherry pie, a store-bought cherry pie, and so she, so she, you know, read the instructions. Says, you know, take out pie and put it in the, in, in the oven at three hundred fifty. So she took the pie, out of the pie tin and put it in the, <laughs> you know, not even in the tin. So you know, the whole thing was just a flat <laughs> thing of cherries all over the oven. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> But she eventually she learned. So I guess you know the moral of the story is if you live in an apartment, you know you and and then you you move to the country, you know, yeah, or you move to somewhere, just even the suburbs where you have a garden, you know, you'll eventually learn how to do these things right, you know. But yeah, well, and that's just it. And you know, um, I don't know if Mouse Toes is done with her presentation or if she has something else to add real quick. Um, when it's time to close up, you know, I just have a thing or two to say, and then. We'll gardening number one it's not for weenies practice practice now get you some gloves a good trowel and a man who can trench you out a hole hang on hang on a sec got a murder <laughs> Vern's going to bed hey Vern from oily <laughs> yeah give it a try if you got a seed vault either try to drive it or get rid of it Okay, don't be stupid. Don't just go. It's like having stuff in a bug out bag and it's, you know, that hyper sucked in plastic stuff that you need so the knife don't to spend money on those, it to cut it to get it out. It's not what I'm saying at all. So use what you have. So if you want to grow food, don't expect to do it when it, times are hard. Got to have water for it. Get you some gloves, a shovel, some kind of man to dig you a hole because you might not have gas for your little Toro digging thing. Just give it a try. Consider it and then think, how are you going to store that food? How are you going to put it back? Think like a squirrel who's got to put it in its cheeks. We ain't got that big of cheeks. Garden, try, do something. I'm done. Yeah. And, and, you know, truthfully, you know, gardening if you've never gardened don't try to go out and plant five acres of a garden <laughs> start with a few things and go out there and you know don't make it this huge massive plot of everything put a few of each plant or whatever you know that's just what I'd encourage you to do because I've seen people get completely overwhelmed by that you know mm -hmm. too fast on it you know and you know prepping does fall over into homes Setting too if you if you get a place of your own and you start doing this and yes you can still homestead in town you can still grow things you can still you know in certain areas I'm not saying everywhere those stupid HMOs um, mm -hmm. can really get to you but like GMOs or HOAs I mean not not <laughs> HMOs. health maintenance organizations <laughs> Health care is on your mind. Company, how about that? No. Oh, our lack of Obamacare has affected our brains. Has <laughs> made me. No. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, you know, just start out easy. Start working on it now. At least try to see what works in your area. If you have friends that garden. Start talking to them, especially if they live close to you, because you know they may have similar soil. What did they have to do to get their soil right to grow, or you know, different if you things have like children, that? Children, give them a shovel. When I was a kid, my dad gave me a shovel and said, "Knock yourself out." I, I dug a hole like almost to China, the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Mouse Toes, for heading this one up this week. I appreciate it. And thank you, all of our panels. Or any last thing, real quick, that anybody wants to say, or are you good? This is a garden and bicep. You will get you one. Um, I'm, I'm having fun cloud mining Bitcoin and Ether. That's about it. <laughs> That's been my major achievement for last week. Real quick. Yeah, yeah go ahead. 
Um, she is right. Uh, practice. Uh, this is my first year to uh, start a garden. Um, if you guys seen any of my past videos, um, I had some trouble with Ferry Morse, uh, a plantations product LLC company. Um, I had to uh, email them saying that no, almost 30% uh, of um, what I planted I had germination. I emailed them and I had a little bit of trouble with them. But the Plantation Products is a Walmart, uh, the dollar store distributor. So um, I, I had almost, um, I had 30%, about 30% germination. And what did end up coming up somehow overnight killed everything. So, um, I did not start back. Uh, I'm gotcha. saving these for next year. Um, I did have uh, an idea. Um, I remember when I think I was in second grade, I put a little, uh, I think we all did this when we were in school. We put a little paper towel inside a Ziploc bag and wet it and put that little bean in there to, sh to see how it sprouts. Well, I just yes. that with all my lettuce. I had germination in 24 hours. Uh, uh, yeah, you remember that. Um, so that is something you guys may want to try and check out. See, and everything's different for everyone. Uh, what may work for me may not work for you. Another thing that I did is I got those little bitty, uh, I think they're one or two ounce uh, bathroom or bath cups. So you, you, know, you uh, brush your teeth and you wash your mouth out the little plastic ones. I went to Walmart and got the unwaxed. They are just paper cups. And I planted all my soil in those and started all my seeds. Um, and that ended up working. However, I think I had a, a hawk or a buzzard come down and land on my uh, my seed buckets. I had all these uh, plastic drawers, these little plastic drawers you get at the dollar store. I had everything set up on that and on the racks outside in the backyard. And I think that whenever they landed to go to eat my seeds or my sprouts, they knocked the whole thing over. So I have lo I lost everything. So wow, wow. Practice, 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 and and maybe try that method that I said about the Ziploc bags. Yeah. You know, put my tomato seeds in there and line them up real nice and neat. And when you go to uh, get ready to uh, plant the sprouts in soil, all you have to do is cut out your little squares of your paper towel. And, um, and try that. So hopefully it works for everyone else like it did for me. Maybe it won't. Try try different things. You know, everything's on YouTube. I mean, it's all there and it's all free. It's free education. Yeah. Just so like you know, I, 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 I have for it in case the poo poo hits the fan before before that happens. Okay, yeah, Hawaii, real quick. I just wanted to say one thing. You know, I don't know if anybody watched the Magnificent Seven, but the old guy in the Mexican town who complained about the farmers. In his town, all they ever do is talk about women and fertilizer. <laughs> he was sick of them, you know. So I don't know, you know, how it is because I, you know, I don't, I, I haven't done any serious farming in my life, but so, but uh, um, you know, it, I, I suppose it's just, it, it, I, I would, it's a tough business if you're trying to do large, lots and lots of acres acreage, but you know, if you're just trying to do a survival garden, I suppose that's manageable. Yeah. yeah, and we didn't even talk about gorilla gardening, you know, where you can throw some seeds out in a vacant lot somewhere. Yeah. But, um, you know, you got to be able to defend the insects there and water it, too. So, yeah, yeah keep true. it simple. Like Oily said, we're not homesteading. We're just trying to grow some green beans, you know, a little bit of squash, that sort of thing. And Willa Tassie, you're rolled up at the end, and we love you. Sorry. You're so good to see you. It's like Sorry. top of the date and all that. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate it. Um, after the video is posted, you're welcome to post your tips and things maybe that we didn't go over in the in it below. Check out everybody's channels. We appreciate you. We love you. If you need prayer, holler, and I will be happy to pray with you. Thanks for coming. Sorry we ran a little bit late. We'll talk to you later. Bye.